Good morning. Please join me for the call to worship. Though many places in the world are bound in war, the, pe the peace of God is poured out for all people. Though discord and struggle have become factors in the lives of the people, the love of God is lavished on all people. Let us praise the God of love and peace. Let us listen for God's words of peace and justice for all people. Amen. Grace and peace of Christ be with you. Good morning, friends, family, church members, guests, and visitors, all who are joining us on this special Memorial Sunday. We take this time to welcome you all to our virtual worship service here at Temple City First United Methodist Church. As we prepare to enter into our worship service, we invite you Take a moment to pause, block out all the distractions, block out all your errands, block out all your to-do lists, block out all the distractions around you, and just take a moment and just to be still, just to be present with God over our worship service. May the melody and the tunes touch your heart. May the prayers be aligned with your mind. May the word of God be invited into your sanctuary wherever you may be right now. And so again, we wanna welcome you all to our Memorial Sunday service here at Temple City. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sometime back I received in the name of our country the bodies of four Marines who had died while on active duty. I said then that there is a special sadness that accompanies the death of a serviceman, for we're never quite good enough to them. Not really, we can't be. Because what they gave us is beyond our powers to repay. And so when a serviceman dies, it's a tear in the fabric, a break in the hole, and all we can do is remember. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise. We see them as something like the founding fathers, grave and gray-haired. But most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. We owe them a debt we can never repay. All we can do is remember them and what they did and why they had to be brave for us. We are struggling, Lord. You know how difficult it is for us to hear the news of violence and warfare and see dear lives lost in battle and strife. We long for your peace to flood the world. We cry out for your presence. We wonder if you hear our cries, how small is our faith? From the very beginnings of time, you have poured your love into the world. People have made decisions about how to respond to that love. Some have chosen to act in ways of peace, justice, and mercy, loving ministries of kindness and compassion. Some have chosen to impose their will onto others, never acknowledging the rights and lives of those they oppress. Sometimes we, by our attitudes as well as our actions, have acted in ways of oppression. But you forgive and heal us. You call us to bear your witness of peace to the world. We do not need to crawl to you during the nights of our fears for healings. You have given us new life in Jesus Christ, who taught us about your love. Through Christ, we are adopted as your heirs, your beloved children. You have given us opportunities to bring hope and peace to others. Let us seize these opportunities for ministries of hope. Encourage our hearts, strengthen our spirits, and our commitment to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray the words that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and please forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, church family. As we worship together this morning, let's invite the Holy Spirit to be in our midst. And let's also invite the Holy Spirit in our lives every day to guide us and to keep our hearts on fire for Him. Holy Spirit, rain down. Holy Spirit, rain down.
After a long season of waiting, of social distancing and gathering and worship from afar, we are so happy and excited to welcome you all back on our church campus. But upon your return, we ask that you take a look about the certain protocols and standards that will be upholded upon your return. Good morning, welcome. Good morning. Welcome back, so good to see you. Please sign in okay. uh, with your name, phone number, and I will take your temperature. Okay. Okay, and you are fine, so you okay. may uh, go in and... So you okay. will ask that you be masked inside the sanctuary. Okay. There are gloves here for your use if you don't have them or if you want them. Mm -hmm. There are masks here if you don't have them. All right. We do ask that you be masked inside. There is a dispenser for hand sanitizer on entry. Okay. And the ushers will take it from there. Okay. Hey, it's nice to have you this morning. Uh -huh. Did you bring family with you? Oh, uh, my family's at home. They're, they're gonna, yeah, they're at home. They're going to be watching it uh, from home. Okay, good. That's good to know. Uh -huh. Okay. And okay. the usher will help you find a seat. Okay. And Hi, do you, Steve. Do you think like I can sit here? No, um, it's over here. And okay, over you here. need to stay in this seat. Once you're okay. seated, you need to remain there. All okay? right. Down. Down. Go okay. all the way. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I am staying seated. Worship services will be conducted shorter, but in the case of needing to use the restroom, please make your way in back of the sanctuary through the narthex to find yourself in the restroom. There will be a hand sanitizer station placed out in the front, but in the case of using the restroom, there is only permitted to be one person at a time to the restroom. Please be patient if it's of use. To conclude our worship service, we ask that you walk out to the back of the sanctuary and make your way out through the exit doors. We know that you all must be super excited and wanting to stay around and fellowship and stick around to catch up with your friends and family. But we simply ask that there is no group gatherings. Instead, you will be asked to make your way out through the exit doors and through the hall to have yourself a safe and blessed weekend. We thank you all, friends, family, church members, guests, and visitors for upholding and respecting the protocols for our safety of our return back onto our church campus. Hello, children, thank you for joining me um, outside in my backyard uh, next to my garden. Thank you for joining me for children's time today. Today, I brought a bunch of tools with me. Can you see them? There are, here's some gardening tools. I also brought some scissors. Do you know what a tool is? It is a, an item, an object that helps us do something, right? So a tool, scissors are a tool because it helps us cut the paper. Or um, a shovel is a tool that helps us dig a hole, right? So it's something that we use that can help us. Do you think it would work? If I used these scissors to dig a hole? No. What's for digging a hole? A shovel, not scissors. Each tool is designed for its own purpose. So for example, God doesn't just give us a bag of tools and say, okay, now go live your life. And here, I have a job for you and it's to um, dig a hole and I'm gonna give you this tool. This tool is a hammer. That's not gonna help me dig a hole. Or God doesn't say, I am going to give you a job of 
uh, build, making a car, fixing a car, and I'll give you this tool. This is a spatula. How is that going to help me? That can flip pancakes, but that's not going to help me fix a car. So each tool has a purpose of its own. I got this terrific tool organizer for my birthday this year. It helps me to see which tool is which. And so that when I do need, okay, I need to rake some leaves. I can pick out, do I want the little rake or do I want the big rake? I can see all the tools and I can decide which tool do I need. When God gives us a tool, when God gives us a talent or an ability to do something, God designs it specifically for us. So the way that I can flip pancakes is a different than the way that you can flip pancakes. The way that I can hammer a nail is a little bit different than the way that you can hammer a nail. Each gift is given to each person, and it's up to us to develop it and to use it whenever we can. There's a scripture text. It's from the second letter to Timothy in the Bible, and it says this, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. So I remind you too to learn and develop the gift that is in you so that we can all do our best to praise God and to help one another and to build God's kingdom here on earth. Okay, let us have a prayer. I had to put all my tools away. Lord, we thank you for giving us so many tools and so many gifts. We thank you that you help us to develop them and to grow so that we can learn to be your people. We ask you to guide us and direct us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Good morning, church family. My name is Don. Thank you for asking me to share on my thoughts on one of my favorite scriptures, which comes from Ephesians chapter four, verse 32, which says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ, God forgave you. This verse reminds me as Christians, we are called into action. Kindness, compassion, forgiveness, these are the attractions of Christianity. They're what made me say to myself, I want some of that. I want what they have. It also reminds me of one of the most important, if not the most important of Christ's teachings, which is the Lord's Prayer, where we enter into a contract, if you will. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. teaches me that if I'm going to receive God's blessings and plan on keeping them, that I have to be willing to give them away. Thank you for letting me share on this. Have a blessed Sunday. This song says, uh, no matter who you are, no matter where you go in your life, at some point you're going to need somebody to stand by you.
somebody to stand by you when the night has come and the land is dark and that moon is the only light we see no I won't be afraid no I won't Keep one here just as long as your people come and stand by me. Darling, darling, stand by me. Oh, stand by me. Oh, stand, stand, stand by me. Come on, stand by me. Stand by me. Stand by me. Chapters 8, verses 12 through 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, but to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you do not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back in fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we 
may also be glorified with him. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Please join me now in a word of prayer. Most good and gracious Lord, as we humbly come before you this Sunday morning, as your beloved children, may your Holy Spirit fall afresh on each and every one of us, empowering us, molding us, shaping us, guiding us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you right here and right now. In Jesus' mighty name we say this prayer. Amen. This Monday, we will be honoring Memorial Day. This special day is celebrated and observed on every last Monday of May, honoring the men and women who have died while serving our country through the U.S. military. Memorial Day, and originated years following the Civil War, and it, but it became an official federal holiday in 1971, unofficially. And marks the beginning of the summer season. But for many Americans all around the country, it is observed by visiting cemeteries, memorials, maybe holding family gatherings, or even participating in parades. It is a special day that it recognizes the spirit of those who have sacrificed so much for our country and so much for our freedom. What we come to recognize with the soldiers that have served or are currently serving this military is that it takes a special or a whole different spirit to serve in our military. If I were to ask you, what are some characteristics that are embodied by soldiers? What would fill your mind or what would some of your responses be? For me, one must be clothed in a spirit of courage. Must, one must have the spirit of patience or even the spirit of obedience. One must even have the spirit of patriotism. You see, the word spirit is an interesting one because it needs to be accompanied by the little word of. Yes, O-F, of. The word spirit, it appears nearly 700 times in the Bible and usually following the, the, this word is the word of. In the Bible, we read about the, the spirit of life, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of power, and the spirit of truth. The spirit of this world or the spirit of destruction, the spirit of holiness, or yet the spirit of peace, the spirit of humility, or even the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of gentleness, and the spirit of lest goes on and on and on. In our scripture passage today, there are three of these spirit of references or occurrences in the, in the five verses of the eighth chapter of Romans in which Alia has just read a moment ago. First one is the, the spirit of God in verse 14, spirit of slavery in verse 15. And then in verse 15 again, it says the spirit of adoption. You see, of is only a tiny word serving as a preposition, nevertheless, it is a very important word. The word spirit by itself, it doesn't tell much of, of a great deal. In fact, when you mention the word spirit, some people often think of, of ghosts or maybe the spirit world or even the dead. For others, this world can attain and be bothered up in, in a variety of meanings. Upon hearing the word spirit, some of you think of your, your favorite sport team and that's the spirit or the the spirit of adventure or, or getting into the spirit of a special occasion, maybe for birthdays or even celebrating graduation. We all have heard of that common phrase, that's the spirit, as a, as a word of encouragement. Even in the Apostle Paul's time, the word spirit needed some extra identification and qualification. And so that is the second noun with the small word of becoming very important to identify what kind of spirit is exactly being talked about. And that is why the Bible so often says spirit of following another meaning. Today, as we celebrate Memorial Sunday, acknowledging the presence of the Holy Spirit that is living amongst us, we ask ourselves a question. What kind of spirit do you have? Or what spirit are you clothing? Or what follows the of in our lives? Do we have a spirit of fear or a spirit of faith? A spirit of hate or a spirit of love? A spirit of selfishness or a spirit of helpfulness? A spirit of greed or a spirit of generosity? A spirit of ruthlessness or a spirit of gentleness? A spirit of bitterness 
or a spirit, uh, a spirit of compassion. You can see just how important this small word of is as it follows into these sentences. You see, although we celebrated Pentecost last Sunday week, we are Pentecostal people who recognize the gift of the Holy Spirit that is living amongst us, that is active amongst us, that is present amongst us in our lives, guiding us, empowering us, interceding on our behalf. You see, just as the Holy Spirit had come down in, in the sound of a mighty wind and a tongue of fire falling afresh on the disciples' head, today we explore these questions of what did fall afresh on us? Friends, the celebration for us continues as we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, not just back in history, but the continual feeling of this presence of the Holy Spirit that is living amongst us today. Our scripture passage today opens with a beautiful revelation or a friendly reminder that we are indebted to the Spirit who gives us life. We are clothed not by the spirit of slavery, but by the spirit of adoption. We are not people who walk aimlessly into this world, but instead we have bones, we have blood, we have veins, feelings, dreams, and hopes that are brought to life by the Holy Spirit. You see, when we recognize that, when we remember that we were baptized, we were adopted by God and, and incorporated as members of God's beloved family, when the water of baptism drenched over our head. Our sinfulness was covered away and, and are wiped out with the forgiveness of God, not partially, but completely made anew. We were born again into this amazing and wonderful family established by this relationship with God. He has made us children of God. And so we are promised to be heirs of God. And therefore, we cry out with excitement and comfort, Abba, Father, to acknowledge the intimate relationship with God. It is a close relationship where we can run to God's loving arms. We can cry out to God and offer all that stirs and weighs heavy on our hearts and on our minds because He truly cares for you. Every day, the Spirit reminds us that we are clothed in the love of God, claimed as His beloved sons and daughters. We are not just God's people, but that you and I are precious child of God daily. God's spirit, it gowns us in the spirit of direction. It leads us to the life of Jesus and enables us to see him, to hear him, to feel him and experience him in our lives. Someone who is our friend, who is our savior, someone who we can turn to in our deepest needs every day, every hour, every minute. The Holy Spirit shows up in our lives and intercedes on our behalf to restore us into this relationship with God. The Spirit, it directs and convicts us of our sin, but it points us to this life of Christ. It is that strong itch in our hearts when we are doing something that we know we shouldn't be doing. And so it directs us, it, it renavigates us back onto this path of righteousness that is seeing good in the eyes of God. You see, the Holy Spirit is busy every day in our lives, guiding us to live as children of God. Every day, the adversary or the world or our own sinful desires rebel against God and what He wants for our lives. But every day, the Holy Spirit, it influences our will. It steers and redirects us away from evil, causing us to do what is good, to do no harm, and to stay in love with God. We have been made holy through the blood of Jesus, and now the Spirit of God helps us to be obedient children of God and to live lives of holiness. The Holy Spirit is truly a wonderful gift from God. It is a, it is a daily blessing that we should always celebrate, but also learn to clothe ourselves and bear its gifts. Our scripture passage reminds us that we are clothed by the Spirit of God and not by the spirit of bondage. Yet it is so easy, yet it is so tempting to be caught into the spirit of this world, whether it's the spirit of rebellion, whether it's the spirit of greed or the spirit of fear. Paul calls this a spirit of slavery because it is a slip, 
a, a spirit of slavery that grips us and will not let us go even though we wish or no matter how hard we may try to push away. Take, for example, the spirit of fear. Maybe you are about to face a surgery. Maybe you are about to go in, into a different transition of your life. Maybe graduate, enter into a whole new world, or, or maybe you're about to have a, a job interview or, or set down a whole different career path. The spirit of fear, it grips your spirit. It affects your, your body and your, your mind, and it fills you up with all these doubts and fears of the future leaving you with all types of questions about your abilities or your communities around you. When in the heat of the moment and when the heat is on you, the spirit of fear, it drives out all your trust and hope in God. It drives out this understanding that God will carry you through. Take for another example, the spirit of greed. The spirit of greed that is built within you to want more and more and more. You cannot be satisfied until you, you receive more and more mentally, physically, emotionally. More, more, feed me more. You know you ought to be generous, but you cannot let it go. No matter how good the cause may be or how desperate a friend might be, the spirit of greed just consumes you. Spirit of greed will always think of a good reason on why you can't be generous or why you can never be satisfied or you can never be too happy or content because you always want more. You envy those who get so much praise around you because of the way they generously give their time and energy and resources. And you ask yourself, why can't I be happy or content? The answer is that you are caught in the spirit, slavery to greed. You see, every day, there are different characteristics that pull our attention or that give us the urge to wear or to become enslaved to. We can let the spirit of slavery take control and let the spirit of, of lust be around us, the spirit of hatred, jealousy, anger, and like, um, and like rule our lives and ruin our relationship with God, even ruin the relationships with those around us. Or we can put on ourselves, we can gown ourselves the gift of the Holy Spirit in its presence with the relationship with God. You see, Paul talks about the contrast that we are led by the Spirit of God and have received the Spirit of adoption. It is the Holy Spirit who changes us radically so that we want more and more of turning to God. Instead of wanting more and more, we turn to God. That is the, the difference between living as children or, or living as a people in slavery. See, the Holy Spirit points us to the love of Jesus. It guides us to demonstrate the same qualities that Jesus showed while he was here on earth. It is clear that we are clothed in the spirit of love, of gentleness, of goodness, of self-control, of patience and kindness. When we are clothed by God, these are the fruits of the Spirit that are displayed with that understanding that we are embracing the Spirit of God's activity in our own lives. You see, this Sunday, and marks the last pre-recording service before we come back to in-person service next Sunday. And as I reflected, I was reminded of what I had to, to clothe myself in every day and every week. The spirit of perseverance I had to put on. The spirit of creativity I had to put on. The spirit of patience. The spirit of humility. The spirit of giving God total praise on the good and on the bad days. That is what the Holy Spirit does for us. It is when we are spiritually exhausted. When we find ourselves giving up into those, those moments of, of wanting the spirits of slavery again and again, when we feel like we can't pray or when we feel like we don't want to pray or when our faith isn't as strong enough, when we, we, we may feel lost or, or lonely, tired or desperate, that's when the Holy Spirit picks us up and it pulls us forward into our relationship with God with this friendly reminder. You see, friends, when we wake up to a new day, we have two options that are presented before us to either be clothed in the spirit of bondage or in the spirit of God. Let us remind ourselves, let us remind each other 
that we have a divine helper that is present and available to us. That we have the Spirit of God who calls us to holy living and who continually points us to the direction of Jesus. When we come to worship, we are reminded of the Spirit that lives within us. The Spirit that moves around us. The Spirit that empowers us, that boldens us. That whatever the next week will hold for us, we walk with confidence and assurance of the promises of God to do whatever task that He has called us to do. After all, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 reminds us, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but that God has given us the spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, thanks be to God. Good morning, everybody. Please join us as we sing every time I feel the Spirit. So, beloved friends, may you receive now this benediction. Just as God's word was sent into this world to heal and redeem, so God sends you today out into your world, out into the community, to be the light and love of healing and hope to others. So go now and be that light to the world. And may the grace and the peace of God, the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer come upon you this day and remain with each and every one of you, always and forever. May the Spirit of the living God fall afresh on you to provide all that you need. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.